The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Stan Lee has said a lot of things over the years, and, and nothing you know wrong with it. I'm not throwing shade on Stan Lee. Stan Lee viewed his job at Marvel to be a marketer, to be somebody who was a pitch man, uh, carnival barker, people would call him some time, time, you know, not fondly, but that was his job, and it was an important job, and it's a good job. I think that comics definitely needs more of the Stan Lee attitude if somebody who's going to come in with a grin and try and sell some books, and a little less of the, you know, too cool for school, comic books suck kind of mentality. There is this, this, this attitude like, I can't be too enthusiastic about comics because then I'll look too desperate. Go ahead and try looking desperate. Work for Stan. Try being Stan Lee. Uh, plenty of comic creators today, by the way, do use that um, methodology, and it works quite well for them. Do you notice that the comic creators who theme, seem genuinely enthusiastic about what they do for a living, uh, they tend to survive longer, both in comics and also in the hearts and minds of people. Um, it's, it's, you know, I, I, it's hard to assess, like, what, what's going to happen to Tom King in the years to come? Tom King, who often is kind of, paints this kind of depressive kind of, you know, aspect about himself. If I'm banking on who's going to be in comics still going in 20 years, I'll, uh, you know, the other one is Jeff Thorne, who's been on this channel. I know several of you had big issues, didn't like the Green Lantern run. I liked it. I stand by it. And I will, because... I enjoyed it. I would say I enjoyed it even if he hadn't come on the show. I think he did a good job with those characters. You don't like it? That's okay. You don't, you don't need to convince me to dislike it, nor do I need to convince you to like it. It's your, it's your dollar. It's your, your pick. See how easy that is when we just let each other like or dislike what we want? Amazing. Amazing. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a Christmas miracle. Anyway, um, if you look at a, a Tom King versus a Jeff Thorne, the thing that Jeff Thorne has going for him is he honestly feel it, it feels like Jeff Thorne legitimately likes comics, that he's happy to do it. Now you may not like what he writes, but it does he does come across as somebody who enjoys being in comics and would like to keep doing it. And I think that goes a long way. Even if you don't like the books that are coming out, it's nice to have somebody who actually uh, you know seems to enjoy what they do for a living. Anyway, um, some, a bunch of you have been sending me this uh, image from Stan Lee with a quote. And I'm going to read this quote to you. And uh, people are using it as a gotcha. Like, ha-ha, Stan Lee knew what was that. But I, I don't think it's quite what people think it is. So the quote says, I wouldn't mind if Peter Parker had originally been black, a Latino, an Indian, or anything else. That he stay that way. But we originally made him white. I don't see any reason to change that. It has nothing to do with being anti-gay or anti-black or anti-Latino or anything like that. Latino characters should stay Latino. Oh, here comes a ambulance, by the way, to interrupt this quote. Somebody's uh, dying in the back of that ambulance. Come on. Yep, there you go. Come on across. This is a great, the glory of the Pert Show is you get to hear... The environment around you. Oh, there he goes. Anyway, all right. We'll continue. Latino characters should stay Latino, says Stanley. The Black Panther should certainly not be Swiss. That'd be pretty funny. Like the Black Panther, like springs into action. He's all, you know, white and French and eating fondue. Anyway, sorry. Back to Stanley. I just see no reason to change that which has already been established when it's so easy to add new characters. I say, create new characters the way you want to. That was his quote. By the way, I agree with that quote. I think, um, I think it is easy to create new characters. I think it takes work to market them. And underlying, by the way, and you don't see enough videos talking about this, but it's like, why do people race swap or gender swap or uh, sexuality swap characters? Why do they do that? Well, because they want the benefit of the character's name, legacy, and everything that came before it. That's, that's what they want. They're, they don't want to start from scratch and put in the hard work to build it up. They want to basically leverage the name Batman or Spider-Man or Captain America, what have you, and be able to kind of, you know, short circuit the natural building up of a character process in order to start getting some money today. 
And that all sounds good, but it actually doesn't ever work. It sounds like, hey, I can do this, but it turns out the customers and fans are not fooled by this. And it just consistently, there's now decades of proof that that logic of, hey, you know, we'll use the name Captain America, so we'll get all the Captain America fans. We'll go ahead and be progressive and change the character to be black. It uh, people go, but wait a minute, Captain America is white. And then you call them racist, and you get into that entire fight. It it doesn't work over time. You know, customers, you know, know how you originally created it, and they they don't move. They don't change like that. The only way they're going to do it is if you put in a lot of time and effort, and you build up a story. And then you can get them to change, but then you're putting in a lot of time and effort. That's the entire point. If you're trying to get a character over, you got to put in time and effort. Anyway, people have been uh, uh, people have been saying this about the Stan Lee quote. They've been sending this to me as as proof that Stan Lee was against some of the changes that have been going on in comics and some of the different storytelling and some of the race and gender swaps. And this all sounds fine until you go and you look at other Stan Lee quotes. And you realize that uh, Stan Lee said a lot of things in his time. And, uh, for example, one of the other quotes uh, Stan Lee said um, that uh, when they were doing the uh, Fantastic Four is Stan said uh, when they when they asked him, hey, you know, how do you feel about Michael B. Jordan being Johnny Storm in that re- really terrible movie uh, of which Michael B. Jordan is like the best part of it or one of the best parts of like. I, I don't know the best part, but I mean, he was one of the, like the problems of that movie had nothing to do with that decision. A lot of people were, I know were upset at the time. Like you can't make Johnny storm black. If only they knew that that was the least of the problems going into that movie. But anyway, it says, um, Stan, when they asked him like, so, uh, how do you feel about them changing, you know, Johnny storm Stanley? And I quote said, um, you know, it, they said, is it okay? Is it okay that, you know, they made Johnny storm black. Quote, Stan Lee, it was more than okay. I thought it was a great idea. I think they're going to love this character, so I'm not the least bit worried about it. I always tried to pepper these groups with as much racial diversity as possible because that's the way the world is. So that's, that's Stan's quote. So what, what does Stan actually believe? Well, Stan believes in making money. That's what Stan actually believes. Stan believes in, uh, hey, my company is out there and they made a decision and the decision they've made, I'm going to enthusiastically stand behind is the best decision in the world. Now, Stanley has written a lot over the years and I'm not going to pretend that I could get inside of Stan's head, know exactly what he's thinking, but he wrote enough material to suggest that yes, Stanley actually did believe in racial diversity. He was not a white supremacist. There's been some uh, really shitty, People who uh, who are writers and Marvel, by the way, and if it was me, there is no effing way that I would ever hire somebody into my company who would talk about Stanley being a bigot or a racist or any of that kind of stuff. I, I wouldn't. I would not. Sorry, you would not get a job at my company if you're going to insult somebody like that. By the way, same rule applies to Kirby. If you want to go in there and, and throw some shade at Kirby, piss off. Go work for somebody else. That would be my standard. I do think that you should uh, have some respect for the the elders and the statesmen who built the company that you're working for. And if you can't do that, I don't think you belong there. But that's, that, again, that's my call. Everybody has their own, their own call. But Stanley definitely de- de- believed in diversity, and I think he believed in comic books as a method to do storytelling that could, could tell some of these stories and could paint some of those pictures. I think he believed it. And I think that uh, if, you know, Stanley... But I, but I also think his original quote, the one people keep sending me about racial diversity and that, hey, you know, uh, if you made Spider-Man white, he should stay white. I think that people are getting hung up on that part of the quote and they're missing kind of what he was saying, which is it really the, the bigger, truer statement toward the end, which is, I see no reason to change that was just already been established. And here's the important part when it's so easy to add new characters. That was what Stanley believed. Stanley believed that it, uh, if you wanted to create racial diversity, and you should, that the way to do it would be to create something new, to grow the universe, to add complexity, to add these new characters and do something new and original. That was what Stanley believed in. 
And I think he consistently wrote a lot about it. And he, he, you know, that was, that was his true feeling as a editor in chief, as a, somebody who created comics. So no, I don't think this quote is exactly the gotcha where Stan Lee would say, so people have been sending this to me saying, don't you think Stan Lee would be embarrassed and hate current Marvel? And the answer is no, I don't. I don't because Stan Lee believed if he was tethered to the company, if he was hired to do a job, if he was there to promote and work for that company, then he should enthusiastically support what that company offered. That was what Stan Lee's bit was. That was what he believed. And so I think that Stan Lee, if he was alive today, would be standing out there going, I love Marvel. Marvel's doing amazing stuff. And man, I, I just, I'm so impressed with these characters. Who's this character over here? Kamala Khan? Sure. Kamala Khan is a fun, engaging new character. And I think she's awesome. That's what Stan Lee would say. Because Stanley worked for the company and he believed his job in working for the company was to support the company. And you know what? That's a pretty damn good thing. I actually, I have a lot of respect for that. I think if you're being paid a wage to go out there and promote what the company is doing, then, and I know this is going to sound shocking, you should go out and promote what the company is doing. That's what you should do. And that's what Stanley would have done. How he felt in his heart, I, I'm not sure. I, again, I think he he said enough in you know on the record, off the record about diversity. They did care about it. I think he also cared about creations. I think Stan Lee personally, and I'm totally guessing here, he would have been horrified at the idea of taking a character that had been built up and then just ran like Iceman. I I would suspect that he. If he knew about it before he died, I don't think he would have enjoyed the idea of them saying, you know, hey, you're gay now. I don't think he would have liked that. I may be wrong, but I don't think he would have appreciated that because Stan Lee did have a healthy respect for what came before. And Stan Lee also believed that, you know, you could you could just create a, an amazing new gay character. And why not just do that? So it's an interesting it's an interesting comment. So what do you think Stan Lee would have believed in? Um, you know, speculate below as you will. But anyway, just uh, it's interesting when you see all of what people say. Thanks for listening.